All right. So if we have two finite sets, rather three finite sets, x, y, and z, and a stochastic maps between them in such a way so that the codomain of f lines up with the domain of g. And I really mean source and target here, because again, if I really think of x as a function, it's a map from x to probability measures on y. But the domain of g is not probability measures on y, it's y itself. So it's really better to think of this a little bit categorically, where I'm thinking of the target of f and the source of g. So given this, given stochastic maps, we can define a composition of these two. And before I write down the formula, let's think about how we would do this. So if here is x, here is y, here is z, what we want to define is a notion of composition which is determined by if, I give, if you give me an element in x and you give me an element in z, I want to know, given x, what is the probability that z occurs? And there's an intermediary y here. So the way that you get that is, well, I look at all the elements of y. And I look at, given x, what is the probability of that element y occurring? Let's call this, let's say that this is the element y. Then this is f y x. So given x, the probability that y occurs. And going from y, what's the probability that z occurs? That also has a probability, which is g, z, y. And so the probability of given x, the probability of z given x is taking all of these probabilities by varying y and multiplying the corresponding ones when they match up, and then adding them all. So this is defined to be the sum over all elements in y with their respective probabilities, g, z, y, f, y, x. So this is what the composition of stochastic maps is. And now you can see why I chose this notation earlier of writing our subscripts in this particular order. Because if I think of these as matrices indexed by the elements of these sets that we have, then this ends up just being matrix multiplication. So sometimes these are also called stochastic matrices, but I'm going to stick to the no the calling them stochastic maps. So let's look at some interesting special cases of this definition. So first, let's look at the special case where x is replaced by a single element set, y is a set x, and g is a, f a function, not just a stochastic map. So let's take this special example. So let's take y, a function f, and a probability measure on x. So first of all, what does a probability measure on x look like? Well, if I think of x as a set, so let's draw some of the elements of x here. Uh, let's say here we have nine elements. A probability measure sort of gives me a size to each of these elements. So I can think of these as water droplets, each with a specific size. namely the volume. So this is sort of what a generic x looks like with a probability measure on it. And the sum of the volumes of these water droplets is equal to 1. Now if I have a function f from y to x, then the composite here gives me a probability measure on y. What is that probability measure? Well. If I just use the definition, p followed by f, and I evaluate it at y, this is equal to, just straight from the definition, we know that this is the sum 
over all elements in x of the function on the left, which is f, but f is a function, so we know that it corresponds to the direct delta, the Kronecker delta, f y f of x with the probability measure px. Now if I substitute what this looks like, this says this only gives me a non-zero contribution if f of x equals y. In other words, if y is in the image of f of x, is in the image of f, and it comes from some x. So if we look at the inverse image of y, that's going to give me a bunch of elements, and that's the only case where this gives me a non-zero contribution. And what that means is that this breaks down into the sum of all elements x in the inverse image of y. So here we have the sum of all the px's that are in the inverse image of an element y. So let's look at this element y here. The inverse image of this under a map f. So let's imagine that f identifies all the elements that are in the vertical direction. So, right, because a function f might not be one to one, so it might identify some of the elements, and that's why I've drawn it this way. It takes these four elements and gives me the single output y. And these two elements gives me another output. And what this condition says is that the probability here is the sum of these probabilities. In other words, the volume of this water droplet is the sum of the volumes of those water droplets. Likewise here, in order to make the volume somewhat geometrically similar to these, this would be the resulting volume after we apply this function f, and here maybe it's this big. So this gives us a nice picture of what compositions like this look like. It essentially says that we take these water droplets and then we combine them, and when you combine the associated water droplets, their volumes add. As another example, let's go back to our previous situation. In fact, let me write that example here because it's a little bit, it can fit here. So in this case, we had that set X to be, there's a good sale at the supermarket this week and there's not a good sale. And the set Y is, I go to the supermarket or I don't. Now, what if we happen to know the statistics or the probabilities of whether there is a good sale or not at the specific supermarket given that specific week? So you compile all of your data over the course of a year, for instance, and you just ignore the seasons, you ignore the months, you just look at when is there a good sale for whatever definition of good you might have for, for you. And let's just say that the probability of a good sale is maybe only 30%. So roughly 30% of the time there's a good sale on a given week. And therefore, the probability of a not so good sale is 70%. And so you might ask, what is the probability that I go to the supermarket? Question mark. So that's the end of the statement. So all we know is that if there's a good sale, we already know what those probabilities are. I think they were 90%. And if there is a good sale, and 60% if there isn't a good sale, because I still need to eat. And if we happen to know the probability that there's a good sale, and therefore the probability of there being a bad sale, or not good rather, is 70%, then you could still ask, what is the probability that I actually end up going? And that's where this composition comes in, where instead of having an f like this, we instead have our f from our previous example, but we also know the probabilities of whether or not there's a good sale. So it's a slight generalization of this example. And therefore, the probability that I go to the supermarket is equal to, and in this case, I'm going to take the probability that there is a good sale times the probability that I go given that there's a good sale plus, so let me actually write that one down. So that's 90% times 30%. The probability that there's a good sale times the probability that I go, plus the probability that there isn't a good sale, but I still go. And the probability that I go given that there isn't a good sale is 60, 
6%, and the probability that there is not a good sale is 70%, and the resulting probability that I go is 69%. So given those statistics, we still know that si if I just chose an arbitrary week in the year, there's a 69% chance that I'll go to the supermarket that week. So now let's look at another example. And this example, again, we'll come back, uh, we'll come back to this perhaps a few more times. So now let's look at another example. This one may seem a little bit abstract, but it's a very useful one anyway. So let's take the diagonal map from x to x cross x. What this does is, is it, it takes an element x and it maps it to x comma x. So I like thinking of this. Well, maybe I shouldn't draw these directions. So here's x, here's x, and the diagonal of x is this subspace of x. Maybe it would be more appropriate to write that. Now imagine that I have a probability measure on x. which I'm going to represent like this from now on. Then I can ask, I can compose these two maps now, these stochastic maps. This one happens to be a function, but again, we can think of it as a stochastic map. And then I can ask, what is the associated probability measure on this diagonal? Or rather, on this sub, on this space, x cross x. And in this case, the composition gives me a probability measure on x cross x. Given by, well, what is it? If I, well, let's first just use the definition. So we have delta x composed with p. We choose two elements of x because we have the Cartesian product here. So let's write this as x1 comma x2. And this is, by the definition of this composition, and the fact that this is an ordinary function, we use a chronic or delta here. Let's even spell this all out. This is the sum. It's going to be annoying to spell it out. You'll see in a moment why. Because we have x1 and x2, and our intermediary is x. So we're going to sum over all x now. And we have the Dirac delta function. We take our diagonal x, and we plug in the element x, and we look at x1 comma x2 multiplied by, by px. Now, this is x comma x. And in order for this to be exactly equal to this, we have delta of x1 comma x2 x comma x px and this is non-zero only when x1 and x2 are both equal to x so we end up getting sum over all x and x delta x1 x delta x2 x px and the summation over x breaks down. And what we're left with is delta x1 x2 times p of, and that can be either x1 or x2. It doesn't really matter. They're both equal to each other. So this happens to also equal delta x1 x2 p x2. Now, that may sound a, very, a little bit technical, but the idea is very simple. We take our probability measure on x, so think of these as the water droplets on x. Those are the elements of x. Likewise, we have those same elements here. And what we do is we take this measure and we just place it along the diagonal here. So it's the same measure, but then we remove the weights on all of these we remove the weights everywhere else. 
So the only non-zero weights that occur are exactly on the diagonal, and that's why we have these two direct delta functions. So it concentrates our measure on x onto the diagonal in x. And we'll see why this is important when we formulate Bayes' theorem in this language of stochastic maps.